one. All right. Good morning, everybody. Our class norms. We're going to listen and pay attention. We're going to sit still. We're going to have our eyes on the board or on our books, okay? We're going to participate in learning. We're going to be part of the lesson, right? We are going to raise our hands if we want to share out, and we're going to respect each other, okay? We're going to talk respectfully using our sentence steps, okay? Our objectives today, we have four. Number one, I can describe the processes of weathering and erosion, identify the geologic features that provide evidence of those forces, right? We know that. Number two, I can identify and use multiple adjectives in the correct sequence, that's new. I can review the meanings and the uses of the suffixes ly and y in the roots graph and rough. So those are two things that we should be somewhat familiar with by now. And lastly, we have our new spelling words. We're gonna practice targeted spelling words. All right, the first section of our lesson is review for five minutes. I'm gonna set our timer. Here we go. So today we will read chapter seven. The title of this chapter is what? Earth power will power to change. change. Try to talk to your partner about something you remember from this chapter. You might need to do a picture walk and flip back through to remind yourself since it's been the weekend and we had a Monday holiday. So flip through the chapter and see if you can remember some things from this chapter. Tell your neighbor what you remember. Okay, so let's look. We see some stuff that we circled here. What was this? Thank you. 
thread. They just get smaller and smaller as it goes down on an eight. Can you say that in your own words? So the glaciers, as they what, as they go down, what happens? Exactly. So those rocks coming are on the side of the mountain. The glacier slides down slowly, right? And as it's going down, it's pulling those tiny pieces of rock sediment away and pulling it all the way to the bottom. The rock size decreases. The rock size decreases as it goes down. Good job. All right, so let's turn to chapter seven. Locate the chapter, the first page of the chapter. 62. Page 62, good job. We're gonna go over some vocabulary. Eyes on the board. Mineral. A solid, non-living substance found in the earth that makes up rocks. Texture. Texture. The size, shape, and sorting of mineral grains in rocks. Solidify. Solidify. To make or be lost hard or solid. Obsidian. Obsidian. A dark rock or natural glass formed from the lava that pulls very quickly. Granite. Granite, a common igneous rock that formed from magma that cooled within Earth's crust. Durable, durable, a rock that lasts a long time with good condition. Compact, compact, closely packed together. Dissolve, dissolve, mixed with liquid and no solid pieces. No solid pieces. All right, so let's look at the big question at the top of our book on top of the first page. Let's read it together. How do weathering and erosion continually reshape Earth's surface? Okay, so we will read to learn how widely swinging temperatures can cause physical weathering. What are we reading about? How widely swinging temperatures can cause physical weathering. How widely swinging temperatures can cause physical weathering. So when you see that, what are we going to do? Box it up. Okay. So we have 25 minutes for the next segment. We are going to do a close read. There we go. Y'all ready? All right, the practice of close reading eyes up here involves you directing your attention to specific aspects of the text. Let's reread the title as a class. It is Earth's Powerful Forces of Change. Y'all read it to me. Earth's Powerful Forces of Change. All right, we're going to read the first paragraph only because this is a close read. Heads up, this means we are super focused on what we're reading, okay? So the first paragraph only. Are y'all ready? Uh -huh. Here we go, fingers, book worms out. Three, two, one, let's read. Have you ever dodged a pothole while riding your bike? I need to hear everybody. Or skidded on grit that rain had washed in your path? Potholes and grit might seem like little more than light riding conditions. Yet they are evidence of two powerful forces at work. Weathering and erosion, as you read in some chapters, are processes that drive the rock cycle. They break down rock into sediment and remove those in deviation. Together, weathering and erosion are slowly but steadily reshaping Earth's surface. They are changing everything from the streets in a All right, so a familiar meaning of the word drive is to operate a vehicle, right, and direct the movement of it, okay, or to take someone or something to a place in a vehicle. Drive can also mean to serve as the basis for something. The author uses the word drive when stating weathering and erosion, as you read in chapter 6, are processes that drive the rock cycle. What does this statement mean? Think to yourself. 
Weathering and erosion, as you read in chapter six, are processes that drive the rock cycle. Like we were driving it? I don't know what we were that. Okay, hold on. Is it taking it somewhere? No, it's not going somewhere. Talk to your neighbor about what you think that means. Go. What do you think that means? Oh, weathering and erosion are forces that drive the rock cycle. What do you think that means? Okay, class, class. Class, class. Thank you. What does the statement mean? I loved how I heard a lot of conversation that was on topic and it was about uh, things that make things happen. So Daisy, what was your statement that you made? What does um, it mean? Uh, about, uh, it keeps, uh, what was the question? What does the statement, weathering and erosion are processes that drive the rock cycle? Oh, okay, okay. It means like, um, it, it's like, it keeps the rock cycle moving. It keeps the rock cycle moving. Remember that igneous rock, when it is broken into smaller pieces, turns into um, sedimentary rock. Well, how do I get from igneous to sedimentary? I need what? Weathering, breaking it apart, and erosion. erosion, erosion, moving it all into one new spot to form that new rock. So that helps drive it. It keeps it moving. Good job, Daisy. Let's give her a 10 finger whoop. Three, two, one. Whoop. Nice job, Daisy. All right, so we're going to read the first paragraph on page 63. So flip the page. Remember, this is just a close read. We're focusing on small bits, but we're reading it very carefully. Is everybody with me on page 63? First paragraph, start it with me. Go. Physical weathering breaks big rocks into smaller ones without changing the mineral Why do you swing in temperature to cause physical weathering? For example, rocks in the desert vary during the day. Fahrenheit and back 
an example of wild, widely swinging temperatures. Think. Is that 65, 63? 65, 63. Is this widely swinging temperatures? Give yourself a minute to think. If you think that this is widely swinging, give me a thumbs up like this. If you think this is not an example of widely swinging, give me your thumb like this. If you think it is widely swinging, 65 to 63. If you think it is not widely swinging, 65 to 63. What do you think? What do you think? Widely swinging. Right? Crazy. What do you think? Widely. Is that widely swinging? 65 to 63. Okay, how many of you have ever felt it outside at 65? Mm -hmm. How many of you have ever felt it at 63? I don't Can you tell the difference? I don't check, I don't check the weather, so I don't really know. What yeah, it's kind of like not hot, but not cold. So is this an example of wildly swinging temperatures? No. 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 Okay. Because that would be um, just a little swing, right? Like a little warmer, but you probably can't even tell the difference. Widely swinging would be like really hot and then freezing. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to read page 64. Flip to 64. Everybody there? Fingers at the top? 64. Here we go. Chemical weathering breaks down rocks.
Ladies, eyes and ears, remember, since I'm gonna eat bleach, it's a way at ah, because it's a very strong chemical. Some people do. It can also eat away at your skin if you touch it with your hands. It's not good for you. How do geologists know that there is unobserved weathering? So we're looking at page 64. We're looking at page 64. Find me text evidence that tells me. What are we looking for? How do geologists know there's unobserved weathering? Go, find it. Hurry, find it. what? How do geologists know there's unobserved weathering? Find it and underline it. Do not raise your hand. Underline it and I'll let you know. How do geologists know? If it's unobserved, how do they know? Are you reading? Gotta make sure you're reading. Where did you find it? Uh, on 64. On page 64, at the beginning, middle, or end of the paragraph? At the end. At the end. Can you read to me what you underlined? How do scientists know there's unobserved weathering? The text states, use the sentence hymn. where we can't see and those underground caves are the evidence of that okay so we're going to read the first paragraph on page 65 turn to 65 are y'all ready 65 put your finger on it three two one three another gas in the air oxygen causes chemical weathering in rocks with a little help from water, oxygen reacts with iron and iron and The reaction changes the minerals, making the rocks brittle and crumble, and turn them into a rusty red color. All right, so what does the author mean by the phrase, with a little help from water? What do y'all think he means? Abby, what do you think that the author means? Right, so just a little bit of water can change the entire chemical compound of the rain. And that oxygen getting into that water is causing what to happen? It turns the rain into carbonic acid. Okay, so oxygen reacts with the iron containing minerals only. What kind of mineral reacts to oxygen and water? Iron containing. Iron containing minerals react to what two things? Oxygen and water. Okay. So if you have oxygen and water, what's going to happen if it contains iron? It's going to make the rocks rumble and rusty. Rusty. Crumbly and turns them a rusty color. A rusty red color. Okay, with your partner, use the phrase with a little help from in a sentence. Go. Okay. With a little help from. With a little help from Miss Contra, what? What can 
you do with the little ones? Oh, understand what? Understand more about geology. Okay. With a little help from. What's yours? Read it. Tell me. With a little help from his cultural what? Thank you. 
erosion can also massive boulders balance on slim supports. Have you seen hard rocks like this? Okay, class, class. This is a think pair share. So before you talk, I want you to think to yourself. The author uses another form of the word drive. So let's listen to the sentence. In the paragraph, the author states, when wind-driven sand hits rock, it chips off tiny pieces. What does wind-driven mean? Think to yourself, hands down, we're going to do a think pair share. I'll give you a second to think. Wind-driven. When wind-driven sand hits rock, it chips off tiny pieces. Think to yourself. Oh, Share with your partner. Okay. What do you think it means? Go. Wind's blowing really hard. It's really hard taking it from one place to another. Okay, what did you guys share? Okay, so, when, so what I share is that um, I said that like the wind probably going really fast, it moves really fast, mm -hmm. and it moves the sand really fast. And if it lands on something, it moves really hard. So when it lands on the dry skin, it's really hard. It is. It's really hard. You're exactly right. Okay. We've got to continue. When driven means moved and guided by wind. I love all of your thoughts about the word drive and driven. But what do you think that a sandblasting machine might be? Oh. Brandon? I think a sandblasting machine like is it like real? Mm -hmm. Oh. Like on the like on the wind blow. Like a, like it blows wind. But do you think it's blowing wind? Yeah. You think it blows wind? Think, what do you think? When you say wind driven, I think it means like the only way it can move is it's really blowing off. But what about a sandblasting machine? Because it says it's like a sandblasting oh, machine. Sand so what is a sandblasting machine, Nevaeh? I think a sandblasting machine is like when it like blows like sand. It blows sand. It's a machine that blows sand. It's, a, it's like a machine that blows sand, but really, really hard. Really, really hard and fast. Okay. Y'all are all correct. Sometimes wind carrying sediments blows very hard like a sandblaster. Eyes up here. Okay? It's blowing or throwing or blasting sediments at rocks as if it was a sandblasting machine being used to change the rocks. Okay? So let's look in that paragraph. It says pepper is a verb that means to sprinkle or cover. Pepper can also be a noun that means a food or seasoning made by grinding dried berries of an Indian plant. Hmm. And they're black hard covers. That's they're, like the black pepper we use. Dried berries. Can also, yeah, they're dried berries. It can also be a noun meaning a hollow vegetable that is usually green, yellow, or red, and can be eaten raw or cooked. So see if you can make sense of this sentence. Read it. I pepper my peppers with pepper and salt. I pepper. What does pepper mean? Season. In this I season. season. What is the first pepper? It's when Jesus. you sprinkle it. Sprinkle it. Oh. Remember the sediments are peppered. They're sprinkled. They're not literally peppered. They're peppered, which means what? To sprinkle. To sprinkle. I sprinkle. I pepper my peppers. What kind of peppers here? The food. Pepper. Food. The black kind or like jalapeno chiles? Jalapeno. jalapeno. I pepper my peppers with pepper and salt. The last pepper is like the black pepper. Black pepper. Okay. We have to use pepper in all types. Okay, so let's go to the next page. We're going to read these two paragraphs where it says heading downstream. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. 
Like wind, water also causes erosion. The tug, read with me, the tug of gravity. Number one is ice cream. Number two is million insects, which is impossible to grasp. 
Okay, so the evidence we're finding is the evidence that geologists have found to determine how powerful forces above and below the Earth's surface work to change the Earth. So let's read aloud under the column for today, what is the cause? It's the one that starts with over time. Go. Over time, over time. weathering over breaks, rocks, so I know that our pictures are not great on 1.4, but let's see if we can figure out what picture shows me that there is evidence of rocks weathering, breaking rocks into smaller pieces and erosion moving them. Which one do you think it is? Okay, so what do we have here? What do you think it is? I think it's E. You think it's E or C? C. You think it's C. Why do you think it's C, Brandon? I think it's C. Okay, we are all listening. We are giving our respect to the speaker, right? Go ahead, Brandon. I think it's C because earlier I remember seeing a canyon and I see that the canyon is closed down. So, like, I remember it was talking about how it just got it. I mean, it's closed and then that's how it's going to go. Right, so that picture is actually a photograph of the Grand Canyon the one that's letter C. So that's the one when I dismiss you to go get your scissors, that's the one you will cut out. Which one are we cutting out? C. C. Okay. Why is the image showing the Grand Canyon the correct image? Why is that the image we're supposed to use today? Abby. Why? I would rocks that changed over time. What two words could I use to describe what's happening at the Grand Canyon? I might look at my evidence and the cause column for today to see if I can figure out what two words are being, are happening at the Grand Canyon. So I'm looking at today's and I'm seeing which two words here have, what two things are happening at the Grand Canyon to change the land over time. And weathering and what? Well, rocks are there, but what's happening there? So weathering is happening. What's the other thing that's happening at the Grand Canyon? Weathering and erosion. 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 Okay. So cut out the correct image and glue it to the chart. Okay. Then write the following information for the chapter number, keywords, and letter chart. Here you go. The keywords are processes reshape Earth's surface. Did you give them time to answer? No, she didn't. 
are listening one at a time. Blank was deposited when blank. Remember, what does deposit mean? To put or leave in a particular place. Oh, oh, my phone was deposited when I put it on the charger. I deposited my phone onto the charger. I put it there, right? Yeah. Logan? Um, I think I have one. Okay. But it's kind of blue. Mm -hmm. Here. Cool. So. Well, then let's not. Oh. We, we won't be rude to anybody. Yeah, okay. The, 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 the no. Okay. Someone else. Blank was deposited land blank. My coat was deposited in my mini fridge when I got to school. I put it there. Give me another one, guys. Brandon. The trash was deposited when the truck got to the trash garbage place in the Oh, the garbage man deposited our trash into the trash truck. Abby? Um, my clothes were deposited in the doors when I folded them and when I got out of the dryer. Nice. My clothes were deposited into the drawer after I folded them. Ah, oh, my clothes were deposited into the laundry machine. What part of speech is the word deposited? Uh, why do you think it's a verb? I didn't. I, just because I ask you why you think that, does that mean you're wrong? Deposit is to put something somewhere. Is that something you do? So it is a verb. Hey, what does the word deposit mean? Think of some synonyms. Okay, Louise, when you come in, I need you to try not to make a big noise. Okay, okay. sorry, it's good. Okay, let's start back up, guys. Eyes and ears on me. What does the word deposit mean? Um, to put or place something somewhere. What are some synonyms for deposit? Place. Place, okay, to place it. Ice cream in the freezer. Is that placed a synonym? 
him for deposit. Yeah. And he put it in the freezer. He placed it there yet. Daisy. Um, hey, we are all respectfully listening and looking at the speaker. I put, I put my stuff on, on Ava's bed and then we go home. Yeah, I put my things on Ava's bed when I spent the night at her house. Those are excellent examples of a synonym for what word? Deposit.